You're, 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 you're listening to the podcast for all of the news, notes, and breakdowns for your Ohio State Buckeyes. This is Sons of the Shoe with Nick Wilson and Spencer German. Hello, everybody. Nick Wilson and Spencer German back on Sons of the Shoe. Uh, we say it often. We mean it often. A loaded show today. We have to react to the Michigan National Championship. That happened. The Mike Vrabel rumors abound, and it is a huge, and I mean a gigantic week for Ohio State. Not only have they added multiple names in the transfer portal since adding Will Howard since the last time we talked, they also have about five or six big decisions coming up in the draft. They've already had a few names enter the draft, so make sure to follow Sons of the Shoe and this podcast Everywhere you get your podcast guy, Apple, Spotify, uh, the free Odyssey app, 923thefan.com. And of course, you can follow us uh, with a video on 923thefan uh, YouTube channel there. But hi, Spencer German. How you doing, buddy? Uh, other than having to deal with the reality that Michigan is a national champion, I'm doing pretty good. You know, I'll be honest with you. The toughest part of my week is going to be dealing with pissed off Ohio State fans that Michigan won a national champion, a championship. This has only refueled the aggravation, the the cat calls at Ryan Day. We're going to get into that, but we do have to get into the big news of the week that not only after landing Will Howard, Kansas State quarterback, to be their starter next year, not only did the Buckeyes potentially upgrade their interior offensive lineman, um, uh, offensive line with Seth McLaughlin out of Alabama, the, the news we had kind of been wondering if it was going to happen. He was in Columbus over the week. They also officially landed uh, Quinshawn Judkins, the running back, the sophomore, soon-to-be junior running back from Ole Miss. And can we just start here? Uh, the fact that Ohio State tried to spoil <laughs> the – uh, the Michigan National Championship by by throwing it out there right as Michigan was wrapping up their first national championship uh, since the mid '90s. I will say, it was in no way effective, but it was very hilarious and very uh, petty. And I give you credit for that. You, there was no way you were stealing the spotlight, but no. the idea that you wanted to and you, you tried to, I do give you extra credit for that. I thought that was absolutely perfect. Like, like, listen, you can criticize Ohio State for a lot of things. You can criticize Ryan Day for a lot of things. You can be lamenting the fact that Michigan's a national champion and putting all the blame on Ryan Day for letting this happen and all this different stuff. But the fact that they dropped that, or, or not even they, he dropped that. Like, you know that they had a sit down with him and they said, hey, you know what we think would be a really, really good idea? Save the news that you're coming here. Until, I don't know, a little after 11 o'clock on Monday night when a specific, a a very specific game just might be going final. And then just put out there on social media, yeah, I'm going to Ohio State just to try to one-up the the Michigan Wolverines being national champions. You're right, it didn't work, but impeccable timing. And I got to say, like, nothing says rival. Like, like, nothing says rivalry like trying to one-up your biggest rival when in their moment by doing something like that. I thought it was perfect. I don't know who planned it that way, but bravo to them. Give that person a raise. If the other side or if the other advantage they were looking for in, 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 in Quinshawn Judkins announcing uh, his commitment to Ohio State, if the other side of this, if it wasn't just about trolling, if it was about maybe stopping some of the Ohio State panic that has already happened – then they should have held off Quinshawn Judkins and Will Howard until that moment. Like I, I, the, uh, Quinshawn Judkins in and of himself, not going to do it for Ohio State fans to to offset any panic you might feel. If you had gone Will Howard and Judkins, maybe just maybe you might have been able to stave off the panic. Not for everybody, but for some of the more uh, easily pliable Ohio State fans, uh, of which I am much more. I would say rational and a, and a points pliable as as you saw from my reaction from Will Howard, uh, you know, coming to Ohio State last week, like flipping the Michigan panic meter on its ear. I feel like if you had held off, if you had held that Will Howard card with Quinshawn Judkins, I think you might have had a chance to reclaim just a little bit of that turf war with your fans who right now are losing their ever loving minds about uh, the Michigan winning the national title and. You know, while we're on the topic, 
I actually think, you know, Ohio State fans, including Anthony Lima, who does the morning show on 92.3 The Fan, I do the afternoon drive show. I don't know why I'm explaining that to you, Spencer, more to the people out there who might not know me from uh, The Fan. But I will say, a lot of people are looking down their nose at, at Quinshawn Judkins, um, much like they did Will Howard. Oh, I, I had I had a Michigan fan texting me last night like, really? You're going to get excited about a running back after Michigan wins the championship just to find something to gra- cl- like grasp onto? And it was like, okay, first of all, this actually is a good move for Ohio State if you like know – college football like Judkins is a, is a great back he was the SEC player of the year in 2022 he was near the top uh, in terms of being one of the best running backs in the SEC again this year um I forget he didn't win SEC running back or he, he wasn't the top guy this year um I forget who won it but yeah like he, he he's a good player so it actually is a good move for Ohio State so I, I think like it's twofold the the idea that it was a good move but also the time, like what I enjoyed the most about it was the timing of it. Like the fact that Ohio State was trying to do this right, like it, like to the minute of Michigan's game going final, I thought was perfect. But yeah, like it is a good move, but you're right. And then I think there's probably a lot of people out there who see this and they think like, why would this get you excited? Like, oh, you're just trying to find something to grasp onto in, in a moment where Michigan's celebrating the glory of winning the national title. But it, it's actually a good move for them. The, the bigger question I now have is, like, what's the offensive line going to look like? Are they going to be able to actually run the football with both Judkins and maybe Travion Henderson if he's coming back? But you're well, right. Let, let's I let's not this moves, I don't know that this moves the needle to your point as much as maybe Will Howard would have. Let's not skip ahead about the running back room itself because I think it, I think it now opens up a, fin, a fascinating um, conversation about where the running back room is going. And I'll start here. One, I think the power of Will Howard and Quinshawn Judkins is you have a lot of guys who are really, both guys really good in between the tackles. So in terms of short yardage, in terms of goal line situation, you now have, one, a running back who is dominant in between the tackles and has been a bell cow, but maybe wants to phase out of that because it kind of wore him down in uh, 2023. And then you have a quarterback who I think is the perfect red red zone you know goal line package for a quarterback as well short yardage package so i think those that was a bit of a problem for ohio state this last year and i think you saw they got a lot of third and favorable situations uh, or or short yardage situations and mayan williams was banged up and kyle mccord was not a mobile but just not a guy who that really was the strength of his game because he's not an overly big guy so i think when it comes to just will howard and Quinshawn Judkins, I think you've started to fix and have two real chances to fix your your short yardage situations, which I think only makes the offense more explosive because then all of a sudden you can take more risks and you can kind of go for it on second and, and short and make a big play and just gives you more variety of what you're able to do. Here's the other thing. You mentioned Travion Henderson, and you know at some point this week, Denzel Burke is declaring uh, either declaring whether he's coming back or going to the draft I think he's tomorrow. But yeah, I I would be pretty surprised if he didn't declare. I also, but we're expecting official word from Marvin Harrison Jr. We're expecting official word from Emeka Abuka, and Travion Henderson to me is the most fascinating case because injuries do absolutely impact your draft stock. And you can go back, especially when it comes to running backs, where you already have a short shelf life. If you've already had injuries in college, and with him, it's just been, it's been the whole thing. I I think it, I think there there's some line of thinking that if you can bring him back, and you don't have to do what you did this year, which is over leverage him, and you know I, I mentioned Quinshawn Judkins being dynamite between the tackles, you know Travion Henderson's a home run waiting to happen. And Travion has already been a big fan and and very open going all the way back to high school about sharing the rock with somebody else. He's not a guy that needs to have the ball on every, every, uh, you know, every snap. I mean, I can't imagine a better pairing of, you know, you're saving a little tread on the tires for, for Judkins who clearly was, was run into the ground this last year after a a prolific uh, freshman season and at Ole Miss and then you can save some of that tread on the tires for Travion, and you might be able to get the best out of both players. And you get the best out of both players, and all of a sudden, 
I think that changes what you're able to get out of Will Howard. I think it takes even le- it even takes more pressure off him. Like that's the dream. Listen, Dallas Hayden and Quinshawn Junkins, I think could do similar things, but there's no doubting if you can get Travion back in the fold with Judkins, you could have a legit all time one season one off yeah. tandem of running backs that we've ever seen at Ohio State, which is saying something because we've got some pretty damn good running back rooms. Yeah, I know Bobby Carpenter sort of put out there that the the Judkins move is kind of independent of of Travion Henderson's decision. Um, and and to your what you mentioned, like he's open to the idea of splitting carries. I mean, he's done it the last couple of years. He did it with Mayan Williams this past year. Um, he did it with Dallas Hayden uh, a little bit as well. So like, yeah, there's there's certainly and chip train him was another guy he, he sort of split carries with the time so i i don't think it's so much about that and i think for a guy who's had that injury history it's actually probably better for him to have a guy like judkins in this backfield with him that can kind of take some of the workload off of him because it gives him a chance to not have to take such a beating maybe he does stay healthy for a whole season and if he's coming back i think that's if he's coming back yes his he, he has several goals in mind one of them is we haven't won enough at Ohio State while I've been here. I want to help them accomplish something. But I think the biggest one for him is, yeah, like I want my draft stock to be higher. I want to prove that I'm not this injury-prone running back that um, is going to just, you know, wilt in the NFL. I, I got to stay healthy for a whole season. So I think Judkins actually helps his case in that. Um, I, I, I will say, too, because as we look and we watch Michigan win the national championship the way they did, and I thought, I mean, I thought for a while, it was going to be like a boat race. And I know we're going to get into this a little bit more coming up next segment. Um, But the way they were running the football early, the way that they've run the football all year, and you look back on these games and these matchups against Ohio State, they have won by dominating the trenches and being able to run the football. And, you know, you saw it again. You you saw it all season when Ohio State needed to get the ball, put the ball in the hands of the running back, work some clock, be physical, even in that Notre Dame game, it, they, they struggled at times to even gain like a yard in, in that game. And then it took Notre Dame uh, at, at, on the goal line, having one less player in the field for them to finally punch it in with a, with a running back. Like this is, to, you bring up like you're, you're bringing in guys that are sort of tr- maybe showing that they're trying to invest more in. Yeah. We have these great, um, you know, uh, these great, just sort of like other worldly talented receivers who are, you know, your gadgety fun, you know, uh, Maseratis, like, like the Maserati Marv kind of thing that's been thrown out there. Um, the Jaguar making, Jeremiah's. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you've got these, these sports cars on the outside and it, it almost shows like maybe they're trying to get back a little bit to, yeah, we're still going to use those guys but we want to be a running team and we realized that that's important. And we didn't maybe invest in that. In the, in, not that they didn't invest in it because they did have Trey and Henderson, but like they're trying to find a quarterback that can run that style of offense. They're trying to find run. Uh, you're, they're trying to add a running back now that can obviously contribute with uh, alongside potentially Travion Henderson and they can go dominate that way. So I think it speaks to almost a, not a full philosophy change, but a mindset change at least from Ryan day and this staff, that we're going to to prioritize running the football and making sure that we do that more effectively because we just watched our biggest rival go win a national championship doing that thing well. Well, and remember, like Ohio State had a pretty damn good running back room this last year. Um, uh, we already saw one or two of the kids in the portal. Uh, Evan Pryor's name comes to kind of uh, memory there, but like um, – you know, Chip Trainum was like you're one of a of a convert from being a linebacker, and I thought he showed a lot of upside. I think Kentucky got a hell of a yeah. football player, but like their bigger problem was health. Their two best players in Mayan Williams and Travion Henderson uh, got hurt this year, and you know Mayan, I mean, he was your 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 goal line short yardage kind of guy, and he just just couldn't stay healthy. And it's funny because you know, Ohio State fans, one of the criticisms that I've heard is, well, he's just not dynamic. And I, I'll i be honest with you. I think everything with running backs now depends on context. And I think you saw, if you've got to put Quinshawn Judkins into, he's got to run the ball 20 times a game. I don't think you're going to get the most effective version of him. Mm-mm. Right. And so I think, you know, if, if this is Quinshawn Judkins and Travion, I think it has a chance to be amazing. If it's Quinshawn Judkins and Dallas Hayden, 
I think it has a chance to be really good. But I think at, like if you're going if you if you're going to overutilize Quinshawn Judkins, it's not going to work out to the extent we hope. And also, I, I just think like here's the number one thing: the best uh, ability is availability. That's the big cliche, and that is what Judkins did. I mean, the guy was a war daddy despite wearing down. You know, yeah. he was a lot more explosive, a lot more efficient in, in his freshman year versus last year. Well, a way you can keep a guy efficient and and run in the best way is just to, to kind of keep him from wearing down. But the fact that I think he wore down a little bit this year and also didn't end up missing games, I think is a testament. I think that is what Ohio State needs because yeah. whether it was Abuka, whether it was on the defensive side, some of the safety injuries they had, whether it was the running Ends back. Work room, was for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, they they have had some injury issues. And I, I, I think Quinshawn Judkins, if you can use him in the right role, and just keep the dude fresh, I think can be a game changer, whether it's with Hayden as the other back or whether it's with Travion Henderson in a 50-50 split. Yeah, I, th- I think you're right. Um, and, and to go back to the mission example too, um, look like look how that team – I, I know, we're, again, I'm, I'm not trying to go too far down the path because we are going to react to the, the championship game itself – but I do think in a sport where we talk all the time, especially at the NFL level, Nick, about it being a copycat league, right? Mm. Look what Michigan's – Michigan's strength was their run game, and look what they had. They had this sort of dual pairing of backs that stayed healthy all year, and you knew you could put one out there and he gave you one thing, and you could put another out there and he gave you another. Donovan Edwards and Blake Corum, and, and those guys really stole the show in the national championship game, especially early – and Washington had trouble stopping them. And I like that to me just speaks to again, it's a copycat league. Ohio State is saying if we can get two really good running backs and pair them together that kind of have somewhat different skill sets, and maybe one has a little bit more um, just availability or, or isn't as injury prone as the other, then we have an opportunity here to sort of mimic what they did and prioritize this thing. So yeah, like I, I love the idea of those two guys being paired together. Even if Travion does go to the NFL and it's Dallas Hayden, I, I still think it could be an effective backfield. Um, but I, I think the idea of splitting carries and all this like bodes well for them and make sure that they keep these guys healthy for what's the, the most important time of year, which is going to be your game against Michigan in November. And then, of course, the college ball playoff, which we're assuming Ohio State's not going to fall out of the top 12 and that they'll be in that conversation again next year. Now, I I will say, though, like the next phase of this for me, as I kind of alluded to earlier, is what is the offensive line going to look like next year? Because, yeah, like you can have all the best running backs in the world, you know, It's but but it's one thing to have Nick Chubb who can bail you out anytime you might miss a block and he can still make a play using a Browns reference here. But it's another thing to have an offensive line that's opening up holes for you and being effective. And i got to be honest, Nick, of all the moves that Ohio State's made so far in the transfer portal and and, and sort of the, this off season that they've done, the Seth McLaughlin move was the one that I've probably felt the most like meh about. And the and, and listen, it's it's more it's than just, just the Michigan playoff game. Come on, no, no, no. It's well, but here's the thing: the snap problems weren't just in that game. He had snap problems in that Auburn game, which is actually if you go back and you watch the sequence that led to. Um, Milro's touchdown pass that won them the game, the, the sort of like Hail Mary attempt there at the end. Part of the reason that they were backed up in like fourth and 32 or whatever the hell it was, was because he had a bad snap in that sequence. Like the snaps were an issue all year. And then also, and I, I want to be clear, I don't think PFF is like the end all be all for grades and, you know, how we should go in and just rank players. I think it's helpful. It gives you some context as to how how effective a player has been in any given season. So I'm not saying those guys are full of are, are blowing smoke up your ass or they're full of shit, but I also understand like, yeah, you take some of that with a grain of salt. But his scores and grades this year on pro football focus among some of his contemporaries have not been very good. Like he's like the 230th ranked, I think, like uh offensive lineman, or I it might I think actually was the 230th ranked like center in college football. Um, so there's some concerns there just in terms of like how great of a player you're actually getting. And plus, like, I don't need a guy when you get on a, in a, in a tight moment against Michigan, like Ryan day, he, uh, he, he clenches enough against in, in those moments. I don't need you adding in the fact that your center 
might uh, ground the ball to the quarterback and then completely ruin the moment for you. We call that the double clench. And just to kind of uh, <laughs> kind of run it back with everybody. The vaunted double clench. The double clench. You never <laughs> double clench. Everybody knows that. <laughs> just to kind of run through the names again. In the transfer portal, Ohio State's added a quarterback, uh, Will Howard out of Kansas State. Quinshawn Judkins running back out of Ole Miss. You mentioned Seth McLaughlin, Alabama interior lineman. Could play guard here. Uh, the returning guys already on the books. Jack Sawyer, edge rusher, the defensive tackles, Tyleek Williams and Ty Hamilton. Uh, Lathan Ransom's coming back as a super senior. Going pro, Xavier Johnson, who's been in school seven years, a wide receiver, Michael Hall, defensive tackle, and running back Mayan Williams. And supposed to announce here pretty quickly, Denzel Burke, cornerback. He, I think he announces pro. tomorrow. I think he announces yeah. on the 10th. Wednesday the 10th. Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, Emeka Abuka, wide receiver, Travion Henderson, Donovan Jackson, guard, JT Tui Moloau, edge, and Jordan Hancock, corner. So those are some of the other shoes we're waiting to drop. Obviously, Ohio State's still been looking at other offensive linemen in the portal. So if they add, I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud here, uh, F and tackle that could uh, block some of that would be nice as well. <laughs> but we are got to put a pin in the new Buckeyes conversation because we want you to comment on our uh, 92.3 The Fan YouTube page or you, of course, can send it to Anik Wilson says at Spencito underscore is Quinshawn Judkins. Is that a impact difference-making move for Ohio State? And when we come back, uh, Michigan made the impact. They won the national title. Our reaction. But first, a word from our sponsors.